So this week in New York City, some of the most evil organizations on earth just so happened to be meeting all at the same exact time as the United Nations and the Club of Rome, the World Economic Forum, the Clinton Global Initiative, they're all in town. Now, of course, there's a lot of crossover between these groups, so it's not too surprising that they're all meeting up in New York City at the same time, and it's even less surprising when you learn that the United Nations is meeting as part of its Summit for the Future event. The Summit for the Future is something that we talked about recently on this program, and it's not being held to forge a better future for humanity by any means. It's not some kind of think tank or meeting of the minds to make life easier in the future. No. Instead, this is a meeting of global governments, NGOs, central bankers, corporate overlords, all of whom are working together to plot future crackdowns against you, against humanity. They're in New York to craft illegal treaties that let them continue opening the West's borders, giving third world savages free reign over our streets and giving our ruling governments the power to declare emergencies at any given time so that they can take a renewed scamdemic even further than they did on the first one. The United Nations has been very clear on this. This is not hyperbole. They've always been very clear on this, that the summit of the future, that they're going to dismantle the current international hierarchy, and they're going to position a bunch of third world countries in positions of authority over the rest of the world. And they're doing all of this under the illegal treaties that our treasonous government is signing in and of itself on behalf of Israel and in back rooms in New York City right now without the approval of Congress. And even if Congress did approve any of this, it wouldn't really matter because the American people can't approve of Congress and don't approve of Congress anyways. Everything that these people do, everything that these people have done for decades has been completely illegitimate. As illegitimate as the elections that got them installed in the first place. So with absolutely no permission whatsoever from the American people, our illegitimate government is in New York City right now signing on to the next phase of Build Back Better and this new balance of power that's being set up as we head toward World War III. As we've talked about on this program, Israel is on the march. They're expanding their war into Lebanon. We just saw some gruesome footage on X. And the U.S. is sending even more troops to the Middle East in response. It's a powder keg. And in Europe, Ukraine is launching long-range missile strikes on civilian targets in Russia under the orders of NATO, while Zelensky comes to the United States to beg for more money and to speak at the UN about the need to execute a regime change in Russia. So as you could expect, that situation is also on the verge of exploding and on the verge of giving groups like the United Nations a whole lot of opportunities to flex their muscles. This is a big week on the world stage for America and for all of us. Find out what all of this means. We're now joined by Alex Newman, who's been on the ground. Alex, uh, thank you so much for coming. We appreciate you being here. Great to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Stu. Tell us all about what you've learned. So I just got back uh, this morning, and it was a really intense experience. I've never been to UN headquarters before. I've been covering UN summits for um, over 15 years now, and we have never been treated and, and marginalized in the way that we were there. Um, anywhere you wanted to go, you had to have escorts. Uh, multiple times we were given communist Chinese escorts, of course. And uh, the Pact for the Future, which I, I first exposed the Pact for the Future in April of 2023. And unfortunately, the fake media in the United States had almost total radio silence on this up until it was passed on Sunday morning. But the outcome of this massive conference, you had uh, almost every world leader there, presidents, kings, dictators, prime ministers, etc., uh, they all agreed that we're going to reinvigorate the institutions of globalism. We're going to strengthen the United Nations. We're going to all defer to the opinions of the International Court of Justice, a, a an international kangaroo court that wants to be the global Supreme Court. And uh, they also got in there uh, the emergency provisions in uh, action number 54, where uh, the secretary general would basically become the dictator of the world in the event of an emergency that he declares at his sole discretion. And as I said in the policy brief that ultimately went into this document, uh, all stakeholders, nations, governments, businesses, uh, civil organizations, all would have to recognize the decision making authority of what they call multilateral agencies, which is the U.N. agencies, UNESCO, World Health Organization, et cetera. So this is a historic power grab. There's a reason why Americans heard almost nothing about it until after it was approved. And uh, it really was, uh, I think, a great leap forward in the most horrific sense of that term for the globalist agenda. And what do you think is the result and how quickly does all this take place? Well, there, there's two things happening, right? They, they, and they, they 
alluded to this multiple times throughout the conference. People don't believe them anymore. And, and they were saying this openly. We People have lost trust in the United Nations. And so their solution is we need to give the UN more power. That's how we're going to regain trust. We need to control what they call the information ecosystem. Uh, and they all committed to doing that. right? If you read the Pact for the Future and they tacked on two other agreements to it, very clear language about taking control of information under the guise of stopping misinformation, disinformation, malinformation. So I think we're going to see that process accelerate very rapidly. And um, we're going to see all of these global institutions strengthened very, very quickly in the days ahead. Uh, there was a little bit of token opposition, but the document was ultimately passed by consensus. So I expect that within the next few weeks, we're going to start seeing this pact implemented. They said they're going to check on the implementation in uh, four years at the 83rd General Assembly. But a big part of this pact was actually reinvigorating support for the Sustainable Development Goals, the 2030 Agenda, which the UN called the Master Plan for Humanity. Uh, and this is, of course, global Marxism. We're going to redistribute your wealth, not just within your country, but also among countries. And so uh, what they're doing here is creating and strengthening the institutions of, as they describe it in the pact, global governance, as a normal person would understand it, global government, and, and they're doing it very, very quickly. I expect it's going to be upon us before most people have even realized what's happening. So what we saw in the uh, during the 2020 uh, summer of love, George Floyd, COVID-19, uh, you know, the injections, the safe and effective vaccine, saw people losing their platforms. People were being named the disinformation dozen. Uh, they were cracking down, censoring, banning people from the Internet. That's nothing. That's child's play compared to what we're going to see moving forward. And that has a lot to do with what the American war empire is up to, the, the military industrial complex, uh, these annexations and this genocide and this, I mean, and we're, we're not going to be able to talk about any of this, essentially. Well, they, they don't want people talking about anything that contradicts the narrative. Uh, and so to give you an example, in 2022, Melissa Fleming, the Undersecretary General for Communications, basically the communications minister, czar, whatever, for the United Nations, announced that they had entered into a partnership with Google. And the specific example she gave was climate information, right? She said, when we Googled climate, we found all of this information that just wasn't accurate. And we own the science. So we entered into a partnership with Google to silence all those voices. So I asked Melissa Fleming, I, I went up to her after one of her panel discussions and said, hey, could you tell us about how this partnership works? What's the formula? How do you decide who's going to get uh, a silence and whose information is going to be at the top? Well, I can't talk to you. I don't know who you are, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and of course, she knew who we were. Um, obviously, her, her department was involved in the approval of, of journalists. So uh, what we're going to see, I think, is an acceleration of the rigging of the algorithms, an acceleration of AI efforts to seize control of the information uh, around the world. And uh, we're going to see it very quickly. And you're right. They don't want us to talk about a handful of things. Yeah, as long as you debate within the Overton window, it's fine, right? There's all kinds of protesters at these things who stand out there and shriek about, why aren't they doing more to save the world? If you're within the Overton window, no problem. You'll get your stuff amplified on fascist book or Google or whatever the, the dumb uh, social media platforms. But if you step outside of that Overton window, you will be silenced. You will be marginalized. You will be referred to as misinformation and disinformation. And ultimately, if these member governments and the U.N. get their way, uh, you will be dealt with far more severely than that. Yeah. I mean, we're talking jail time. Right? You're talking yes. go to the gulag, uh, you know, possibly even face execution for saying the wrong things. Meanwhile, uh, you know, the crackdowns on movement was was this kind of thing talked about? Well, it's interesting because there's a double-edged sword. Uh, they do want to control movement, but they also want to encourage movement. Um, migration, of course, is a huge oh, topic yeah. that, as they explain, is intimately interrelated to all of this. And so they're trying to, through, for example, the Global Compact on Migration that they tried to slam through in 2018, uh, they're trying to open up all the borders of all the world um, so that you can have the third world imported into uh, Japan, Western Europe, South Korea, the United States, Canada, New Zealand, Australia. Um, and, and then once they are in there, that's when the total control on movement comes in. That's when you need your digital ID to be able to get your groceries, to be able to drive, to be able to do anything at all. Um, so there's kind of two tracks here, right? One is free movement of everyone, as long as you're moving from the third world into the first world. And then on the other hand, no movement at all without permission from your overlord. So both of these things are coming at us like a freight train. Hmm. So what will our government here in this country actually be responsible for doing? I mean, if you were just to pretend for a minute that we actually live in a constitutional republic with representative form of government and that they were really doing the bidding of the American people, they would be rendered ineffective by really participating in this and allowing this to go because they're not making any decisions anyways. Not that they are, but what is what is the pitch? What is the what is the the the, the, the positive benefit? What's the upside for the American people to any of this? And why hasn't anybody in Congress or in any form? branch of government here said anything about this? 
Well, it's interesting. Uh, there has been a growing amount of pushback, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But this is being marketed as basically the solution to everything, right? Pick a problem, and then the Pact for the Future, the UN, the multilateral system is the solution to that. So all throughout the text of these agreements, you see, we're going to solve hunger. We're going to solve poverty. We're going to solve climate change. We're going to make a better future for all. We're going to get rid of economic crises. We're going to get rid of inequality. We're going to have gender equality. So everybody who is fighting some problem, real or imagined, right, more manufactured, uh, can look at this agreement and say, oh, yes, they're dealing with my pet issue. Uh, what they don't realize is that that's the smoke screen, right? They're not going to solve poverty. They're not going to solve hunger. They're causing poverty. They're causing hunger. Their policies are literally waging war on the people who produce our food, farmers and ranchers. So these aren't actually aimed at solving any problems. If we had a legitimate constitutional government, the whole building would have been cleared out and every one of these people would have been deported. Now, as far as what our policymakers are saying, to the extent that any of our policymakers have talked about this, the reaction has been overwhelmingly negative, Stu. 26 Republican governors came out publicly and said they are not going to be taking instructions from the UN or the World Health Organization when it comes to issues of public health. Um, 26 out of 50 governors. That's the majority of the governors in this country. And I asked the spokesman for the secretary general about this. Uh, we had a press conference last week. Numerous members of the I, I was supposed to speak there, but I wasn't able to attend. I was out of the country. But uh, there was a press conference last week that almost nobody heard about because the fake media didn't want to cover it. Numerous members of Congress stood outside of Capitol Hill and said, hey, this pact for the future is an attack on our sovereignty. It's not going to fly. We're not going to do it. Um, so we are seeing a lot of pushback. We're seeing pushback at the local level. You have counties declaring themselves constitutional sanctuaries where they're not going to be bound by U.N. agreements. So we're seeing a lot of encouraging pushback, but you wouldn't know it from the fake media because there's a total blackout on all of this information. They want Americans thinking about football and pornography, not issues that are important. Plenty of football, plenty of pornography, especially this time of year. We've got the Diddy distraction, which is actually a very big deal as well. Uh, are you going to continue to be on the ground there and, and, and have more information? I mean, we, 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 we got to cut because of the direct TV dish network restrictions, but I want to have you back for more of a long form discussion about all of this, because there's a lot to unpack and this could be one of the most important things that's happening behind the smoke screens in current times and you're a wealth of information. You're there. Uh, it is one of the most important things that's happening. There's no question about it. I say this is at least one of the most important stories of the decade. Happy to come back on to. I actually left uh, and got back this morning, so I'm back at home now. Uh, I will continue following the UN clown car around the world as long as God gives me breath. So uh, just give me a call. We'll I, want, I, just wait, I want to discuss in greater detail uh, some of what's been written, some of what's been surrendered uh, by your own government on your behalf, without your knowledge, without your permission, all being done in the closet doors. Alex Newman, thank you so much for being here. Uh, we, 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 yeah.